Evet. 10. İsviçre Türkiye Ekonomik Forumumuzun ilk bölümü aile şirketleri yenilikçi olabilir mi konusundadır. İlk konuşmacımız Sayın Ekselansları Prens von e, Rudolf von Liechtenstein'ı sahneye davet ediyorum. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it's a real pleasure for me to be here today. I'd like to start by thanking Doan Tashkent for giving me the opportunity to be here. Um, when he first asked me, I had to think a bit about it. I, as you can see, I gladly accepted. Here I am. I'm hoping that somehow I might be able to uh, contribute to the subject, which is, can family businesses innovate? It's obviously a bit daunting for me to be delivering such a speech in front of an audience which is mostly made of people who are active in uh, our economy and are daily innovating in order to bring products, solution and ideas to the markets. And most of you probably would have been better qualified to uh, speak on the subject. Uh, nonetheless, I will still tell you a bit about the family of Liechtenstein, its history, the way it is governed, and the kind of businesses it is involved in. I hope it will shed some light on the subject. So, it is obviously rather difficult to dissociate the history of our family with that of the small country of Liechtenstein, uh, which you can see on the map. Actually, it is so small you probably haven't found it, for most of you. So I will help you. I cheated a bit here. I mean, you can see it's the thing within the little circle and blown up slightly of proportion here. So um, it is located between Switzerland and Austria. Uh, Liechtenstein has always had very special ties with these two neighboring countries. But for the better part of the 20th century, um, Switzerland has had a determining influence on uh, the country, to the point that actually we sometimes see it written that um, people liken Liechtenstein to some sort of 27th canton of Switzerland. Um, however, regarding our family, its origins go back to the Middle Ages in what are the suburbs of Vienna, Austria. Our family took its present day name from the Burg Liechtenstein. So there it is. The name Liechtenstein is thought to derive from the, the shine, the special stein of the stone that were used to construct the castle. Uh, in German, Licht means um, light or bright and stein stone. So it was contracted, constructed around 1130 uh, by ancestor Hugo von Petronel who from then onwards took the surname of Liechtenstein. So this is the start of the, the Liechtenstein family. The, uh, the Liechtenstein family expanded. You can see some of the names, I mean, of the more recent part of the history, I mean, somewhat recent. Uh, they expanded the family, the properties, and its influence in the region mostly north of Vienna and into what is present day Czech Republic. Already in the 13th century, the family divided into three lines, two of which became extinct, meaning that no more male carrying the name of Liechtenstein were in these branches, thereby causing um, a significant loss to the family estate. At the beginning of the 16th century, the Liechtenstein family split again into three branches, of which only one survived, the Felsberger branch. This time around, a family covenant dated from 1504 ensured that properties from extinct branches would revert to the surviving Liechtenstein family branch. In uh, 1606, Gunda Kahr, uh, Karl and Maximilian, which you can see here, um, signed a new covenant. That covenant would stipulate, among other things, that inheritable titles and, um, should pass to the firstborn male, who should also represent the house as a regent. In insight, I mean, that proved to be a, a somewhat prophetic uh, thing, because in 1608, Karl von Liechtenstein, and in 1623, his two brothers, Maximilian and Guntaka, rose to the rank of hereditary imperial princes, or first, as we call it. So um, that's why, actually, the family tree starts from then. Um, under their stewardship, the family estates grew substantially, and the succession of princes followed this course without major uncertainties. <laughs> The link between our family and the Principality of Liechtenstein goes back to the acquisition by Hans Adam I of the Lordship of Schellenberg in 1699 
and the county of Vaduz in 1712. In 1719, a decree from Emperor Karl VI unified and elevated these counties to the rank of a principality named after a family. Anton Florian, a grandson of Gundakar, became the first ruling prince of Liechtenstein, illustrating the benefit of primogeniture adopted by the family more than a century before. However, when Prince Hans Saddam, my uncle, took over as the head of the family's Hans Saddam II, the family law had not changed since 1606, despite some unsuccessful attempts. Uh, a new house law renewing all the provisions and incorporating newer ones was enacted in 1993 and published in the Liechtenstein Law Gazette for everyone to see. The implications for the continuity of the family are obvious, but if you go back to Liechtenstein as a country, of utmost importance is the introduction of a new procedure, stipulating how the family can remove the Prince of Liechtenstein as the head of the family, but also as the head of state. Even more important, um, the constitution of the Principality of Liechtenstein, which was revised in 2003, does explicitly incorporate procedures to remove the prince and his family. To start the, the process, actually, only 1,500 signatures are sufficient. Well, that's obviously linked to the size of the country. Um, maybe this is the occasion also to uh, jump back into the more recent past. I'd like to list a few events and uh, show the impact that they have had on our family and uh, its fortune. So um, let me start with uh, the Great Depression. So that started with the stock market crash on October 29, 1929, known as the Black Tuesday. The uh, ensuing major bank failures around the world did not spare the principality, even though at that time Liechtenstein was just emerging from uh, what we could qualify as a relatively poor agrarian economy. In uh, 1938, upon the death of Franz I, Franz Josef II, my grandfather, became the head of the family, as well as head of state of Liechtenstein. He established his seat in Vaduz, Liechtenstein, a first in our history. Coincidentally, this year also saw the annexation by Nazi Germany of Austria, but also the annexations of part of Czechoslovakia, ratified by the Allies at the Munich Conference. Then you move to the next point, which is obviously quite a big one, the Second World War. It is generally qualified as the most devastating conflict in world history, with a death toll estimated between 40 and 85 million. Its aftermath was far-reaching and can still be felt today. Even though Liechtenstein had remained neutral in the two world wars, the post-Czechoslovakian post-war Czechoslovakian government of Edward Benesch confiscated all the assets of Liechtenstein citizens. For our family, this amounted to 99 odd estates in Moravia, Bohemia, and uh, Silesia, covering around 1,900 square kilometers and representing over 80% of the family estate. Furthermore, most of what remained uh, from the family estate was under occupation by the Red Army. The Soviet army would only leave the region in 1955. Um, this was a serious setback. It resulted in uh, what we could qualify as a cash crunch. Um, as all the costs of the monarchy are borne by the private estate of the family, the prince at that time, so my grandfather, had no other practical alternative but to contract loans and to sell parts of its art collection and real estate. Uh, additionally, all subsidies and donations granted by the prince to the country and its people were interrupted. And then uh, last point, the Asian financial crisis, which started with the collapse of the Thai Bat in the summer of 1997. It then went on to spread over to emerging market more generally uh, in the form of a credit crunch as investors became more reluctant to lend money to uh, developing economies. This last event uh, would only affect the family indirectly, unlike the aftermath of the Second World War, as I will show you later. Um, but first, let me quickly go over the remaining assets of the family and some of its newer businesses. 